Hey there, Mission Control. Well, as you've seen, we've had some problems separating the uh, rock from the microgreen roots. And it occurred to me a class I uh, took uh, a while ago, and it had to do with, it was called Reframing Problems, or I think it was actually a book called Reframing Organizations, and they did a, a lesson called Reframing uh, Problems. And it was an art class, believe it or not. And the idea is, you know, if someone tells you to draw a chair, a lot of people tend to sit there and focus on what the chair is. Um, like if I said, hey, draw this post, you're going to focus on the outside of the post and all that. And the lesson that they had was, uh, it was called empty space. The idea that you can, you can get just as much information from things that aren't there as, as you could from things that are there. So, for example, you could focus on drawing this post or you could draw the empty space around that post to actually get the same thing. It was kind of an interesting thought experiment. Uh, it made, just kind of flipped a little thing in my head that made me start thinking about, well, you know, there's one way to look at a problem, but maybe you should change the way that you look at it and try to see it from a different perspective, like empty space. So on this uh, microgreen rock separation, I just started going through all the comments and just thinking through uh, the challenges with separating the rock, and it occurred to me that maybe I need to reframe this problem. So I got a few things I'm going to try. I want to show you those. Let's go on the habitat and check it out. Okay, so here's the thought. Is separating the rocks is a real problem. Um, it's going to take a lot of time, equipment, electricity, etc. Uh, to get all that rock separated. It might, be end up, it might end up being that's just how you have to do it. Uh, if you go with sand, then you have the problem of sand going through the bottom of the trays. If you create solid trays, then water won't get into it if you have a flood and drain system like what we have. Remember, this system wasn't built for microgreens, it was built for just normal plants, and we're making the microgreens work in order to generate more money to help pay for everything that we're doing. So microgreens are kind of an afterthought, now we're just trying to make them work. Uh, we have rock that fills these up, as you've seen in other videos, and that's what we have to separate. So it'd be great if we could get rid of the rock. We bought some of the matting that goes in the bottom of the trays and we put it in the system that we have right now. What happens is the matting ends up floating and all the seeds on the matting uh, move around and they don't get a root so you lose most of your seeds. They don't take root and they fail. Uh, and that's because we're coming from the bottom up with water and then essentially this tray ends up floating in water. So what if we could get rid of the grow media? is still the question that I had. So what I did is I got some paracord here and uh, put it down through the hole in the bottom of this uh, tray and ran it along the length like this and had it sticking out in the bottom like that and then put this down in the rock so that as the water came up to it uh, we would get a wicking effect um, where the water would get sucked up into the wick which they use in some other potting ideas. And um, then I could put the mat on top of this and uh, hopefully the wicking effect would actually wet the mat down. And I thought, oh man, that would be so awesome if it did it. So I gave it a try and sad, I'm sad to respond and say, you know, it, it did wick up this. It wicked all the way up. Uh, this was damp, but the pad wasn't absorbing uh, quickly from the wick. So that idea didn't work. So tonight we're going to try to put in some top-down sprayers and see how well those work. And uh, for those who have been following along, you know that the plan is to redo lane one and lane two, so they're actually purposely built for microgreens. So this is a good precursor to the actual rebuild. What we're going to do is put in some misting um, uh, sprinkler heads right above the trays and we're going to see how those work. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's look at some of the supplies we're going to be using. Went to the hardware store and uh, got a manifold here. This is an eight port manifold. So it's going to come, uh, this will be the main supply and then we'll be able to run multiple lines off of it. Each line is adjustable so we can turn them on or off. And this is going to be important because this bed does still need to have water flowing in it so that the bacteria and everything can do their job. So not all water needs to go to uh, the spray system. 
So some of these are just going to turn on and shoot water back into the bed, and that's what we want it to do. Some of them are actually going to be used to distribute water to the bed. So this is a nice find. I'm glad they make them. <clears throat> PEX. Uh, some of you have wondered how come I use PEX. PEX uh, piping and the shark bite fittings in particular, a little bit more money, but this is a good example of why it's nice to have PEX is that it's forgiving. Uh, I don't need to cut any pipe or anything tonight. I just needed to get an adapter and then I'm going to be plugging that in right here and then plugging this right into it. So PEX is really nice. This is the Shark Bite adapters. They're very cool, uh, easy to put on, but they do cost a little bit more, uh, especially compared to just your PVC pipe. But the PEX, it's flexible, it's easy to work with, and like I said, most importantly, if you're experimenting, it's forgiving. Uh, very quickly, um, you can reconfigure things uh, because you have these Shark Bites that can come on and off. Here's the actual misters that we're going to be using. Now, yeah, these hang. So this is the main uh, inlet right here, and then these are the misting valves. They're going to hang, so this is actually going to be hanging down from the top like this. Got ourselves some quarter-inch hose just to run everything, and then you can never have enough of the little fixtures. We have this in our garden, done it before. So some elbows, some plugs when you inevitably make your mistakes and then some T's to connect everything to. So, let's get started on... Uh, so I looked up a few different things here. Uh, the first, uh, just, to, just to experiment, you know, we're experimenting, so might as well see what works and what doesn't work, right? Uh, first thing I did, just a little bubbler, two gallon per hour bubbler here, just put it on the end. I'm gonna drop that right in one of the trays. It should provide more than enough water. We'll see how well it does. Um, one of the things I don't like about this idea is you gotta run a whole lot of these, and every time you put your trays in, you gotta put these back into it. It could work, but it might end up being a bigger pain than it actually helps. I had some leftover soaker hose. So we got some soaker hose here uh, that I'm just going to lay across the trays to see how well they perform. And then uh, how I started, I told you I was going to use a mister. So here's the mister system here. And then I just have it going up, going around, going to the other side. And then here I actually have the mister just suspended. So. Uh, need to put some heat on it just to straighten it out a little bit, but we can do that later. Uh, right now I'm going to go in the house and hit the override button on this valve, uh, and we'll see how it does. Okay, I got the override on, so we're on manual control. So I like how this thing works. Got the water coming out from underneath of it, so it can still fill the bed. The dribbling, that looks like it would work if we temporarily put it in something. So that's a viable option. The soaker hose looks like there's probably not enough pressure to do it justice. And the misting system actually is pretty nice, except for the fact that this thing is all loose. It really needs to be fit. but. One thing I could do is just install just this and you can come out here and manually just kind of spray it. That would probably be more than enough, more than enough to do the job. And it's just a little on off switch there. We'll so I got see. some good information tonight, but I'm not really sure of what I'm going to do yet. Um, the spray, the Mr. Wand on top, uh, it worked better if you actually just grabbed it and literally sprayed things. It didn't have a nice distribution pattern uh, that would cover the bed correctly. And we don't want water just flying all over the place. We want that pattern really controlled. That's one of the major reasons why we're doing aquaponics is because we use less water. If we put a sprinkler system in that's just tossing water around all willy-nilly like, uh, we get water outside of the grow bed and that's not where we need it and we lose efficiency so we don't want to do that. So yeah, that the wand, the, the mister, it worked better when I just grabbed it and I was literally spraying stuff and it only took a few seconds to do that. So that's certainly an option is just to put a spray wand in each bed and you go in there once a day and you just spray it down. It only, like I said, took a few seconds with the volume that we have. So that's certainly an option. The um, the, the drip lines that are coming off of it, um, the um, two gallon per hour drip head, 
That one worked pretty good. Uh, I certainly could see, I, I think that would probably work to put it in a tray with a mat on it and then see how wet that gets. I, I think that would certainly work. I need to try that. Um, the soaker hose definitely did not work. Um, so that's totally off the table. And back to the, the dripper head, the only thing I don't like about that solution is then you got to run, you know, basically a mess of uh, quarter inch tubing all over your bed and have all the connectors and everything in it and move them all around each time. It's not that big a deal, it's certainly a first world problem, uh, but I don't really like it. It just doesn't seem like the right answer yet to me. So we're doing all this again because, you know, if we can get rid of that grow media and go with something else, then uh, like a grow mat, we don't have to do the separation problem. Uh, when we redo the grow beds as they are right now, you know, we're gonna actually redo them so they're microgreen friendly. We're gonna definitely have to have a mister system in it. So this is kind of like a precursor to figuring out what that mister system will look like. Maybe I could kill two birds with one stone. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I look forward to all your comments and thoughts. If you if did enjoy it, please hit the thumbs up button. Uh, you can hit subscribe if you like to follow us and hit the little bell and you get notified. Some of you have said that notifications aren't working and I checked out YouTube. That seems to be a fairly common problem. We are on Facebook and on Twitter, and I make sure I post all of our new videos there, so uh, you can follow us there if you like. Anyway, in the meantime, everybody, have a great evening. This is Real Martian. Out.